Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at another auxiliary equation uh, example but in this case you'll notice that our ODE has a function on the right hand side making this a non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation. So how do we approach this? Well we're going to use some of the knowledge that we know of how to solve our homogeneous ODEs and then we just have to do a little something extra. So essentially the solution of this ODE will be a combination of a homogeneous side of the solution, which is essentially like kind of how, how the solution is influenced by the left hand side is like how I think of it. And then we've got the right hand side. So how does this, uh, how does this function on the right hand side influence the solution? And that part of our solution is called the particular solution. So first, what we will do is we will solve the homogeneous, so this homogeneous part of the solution. And then we will find what is the particular part of the solution. So let's jump right into the homogeneous part. This should be pretty easy if you've watched any of my last videos. So the auxiliary equation for this ODE is r squared minus 4r plus 3 equals 0. So this, we could factor it. I'm going to use quadratic equation because it's easy. So uh, minus b, so that's 4 plus or minus square root of uh, b squared is 16 minus 4ac all over 2 times 1. So this is 4 plus or minus 16 minus 12 is 4. This is going to be 2. And this is 2. So r is going to be, this will be either 6 over 2, so 3, or it will be 2 over 2, which is 1. So two solutions uh, to our characteristic equation here, or auxiliary equation, is 3 and 1. And we know that we got two real solutions. So the homogeneous solution will be a linear combination of, we'll call this A. So it'll be A times E to the 3x plus B times E to the 1 times x. So that is our general form of the homogeneous part of our solution. Right. So now we need to find the particular solution. And essentially what we do is kind of similar to how we get the homogeneous solution. But instead of assuming that the solution is going to take the form of e to the something x, we're going to take a look at what the right hand side is of our ODE. And that's going to uh, essentially tell us what we should, what, what would be a good idea for us to assume that the solution would be of the particular part. And you can see that the right hand side is a linear first order polynomial. So let's just assume that the particular solution takes the form of a linear first order polynomial as well. So let's say in, in its most general form, it could be, it would be expressed as C times X plus D, right? So let's, let's assume that that's the form of the solution. It makes sense, right? So let's take the derivative of this, we'll get C. Let's take the second derivative of this, we'll get zero. Okay, I think I can move over here. Okay, great. <laughs> So our ODE, let's verify. Essentially what we're doing, we're, we're gonna plug in all of these derivatives of what we assume the solution to be. And we're going to um, see what conditions we'll find for C and D to make this true, that for Y particular to be a solution. So the ODE would then become, if we plug in our Y double prime that is zero, and then we've got minus four times C uh, plus 
3 times the first, or, yep, so 3 times cx plus d. And this is equal to x, our particular solution. Okay, great. So we have minus 4c plus 3cx plus 3d. And this looks a little bit confusing right now, but it's really not that bad. If you'll, you'll notice here, we've got a const, some constant, 3c times x, and then we've got plus, and then 3d minus 4c. And again, this equals to x. And if it's still not clear what we're gonna do here, what if I added a plus zero, right? So you'll notice here that 3c, this coefficient, if we want this, if we, if, if our assumed solution, we want this to be a solution to, uh, to the ODE, then we need this equation to hold true, right? So this is, there's a hidden one here as the coefficient. So 3c must be equal to one, or c must be equal to one third. And you might be thinking, okay, so c is one third, that means d can be anything. But that's not true, right? Because if d was anything, then this might not be true. 3, 3d minus 4c, that needs to be equal to zero as well. So we can't forget about that. So we've got 3d minus 4c equals zero. And luckily, we know what c is, right? So 3d minus four times one third equals zero. 3d is equal to four thirds. d is equal to four over nine. Perfect. So that means that we could write our particular solution, right? Particular solution, it was uh, cx plus d, so that's gonna be one third x plus four ninths. Awesome. So now we have our homogeneous part of the solution and the particular part of the solution. So let's write the full solution, <laughs> right? It's, it's as easy as that. So y is equal to, and the homogeneous part was a e to the three x plus b e to the x. And then our particular part of the solution is plus one third x plus four ninths. So this here would be the solution to the ODE that we were given. And if we wanted to find A and B, we would just need some initial conditions for this ODE. Um, and that's pretty much just uh, like straightforward math um, at this level. So you just plug them in, you'll, you'll have a system of equations.